property, property owners in loop areas began to raise their rent. Maybe it was just a coincidence, right? Because there's demand, so they want to raise their rent. Because the rent in the loop area is much higher than south of loop, south side. Okay. For example, if you have a, a, a storefront, the rent was uh, 250 a month. But the same size of the space in South Park, uh, which is current Chinatown, is 120. Between varies between 120 to 190. So this pressure, you know, forced a lot of Chinese business owners to move. Okay? Volume to move, but actually they were in a way they were forced to move to South China. So by 1910. More than half of the Chinese business were already moved out of this old Chinatown area, South Park, and to uh, the so-called South Side, okay, so which in February 1912, okay, that area was immediately claimed as a new Chinatown. Okay, around the 22nd Street between, uh, 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 between Clark Street and the Princeton Avenue. Okay. Between these two streets, you have a wind force. So that was the new Chinatown. And this new Chinatown would want to uh, um, situate everyone, even you know this area inside and out as local residents. Um, because there's reason to do that. In this map, <coughs> the Chi Chinese uh, initially was in the loop area. Okay? That is uh, this uh, uh, 33 area. So Chicago was divided by the municipal government into four regions, four main regions, okay, by the river, by the uh, Chicago River and its branches, okay, into the four areas, right? Downtown, that's loop area. North side, okay, north of the downtown is north side. And the south of downtown is the south side. And the west of the downtown is the west side. These are four areas, large areas. Downtown is business commercial center, while the north is a, a population concentrated area, okay, which also has a large public uh, uh, public parkland, beaches, and same is the south. And the south actually is the largest area of the city, actually, in the south. The south side, um, south side make up 60% uh, of the city's land area. And the most industry in the town also <coughs> were located in South Side. So because of this pollution, right, because of the industry, because of the new immigrants and you know, working class there, so the white uh, residents didn't want to stay there. So that is area, but some part in the north side also, the traditional immigrant neighborhoods, like our guy, right? Okay, that was a place initially about Jewish, Irish, and then later on, um, Southeast Asia. Now, now it's a so-called New Chinatown, North Chinatown. Uh, so in this area, because you know there's a meat packing factory, right? Livestock there. Uh, the so-called Armor Square was named after Philip Armor, right? The brothers who founded this meat packing industry in Chicago. Uh, so this Chinese moved to this area because they did some research. Okay. An Liang, the community uh, uh, organization, <coughs> the leader of Chinatown, did some research. And they found this area, uh, not only rent is cheaper, but also has larger space. Okay. There's a lot of uh, uh, business buildings. And also there's already uh, a public school there, and uh, one private school. <coughs> so there's a room for development, for commercial as well as residential. Yeah. So they decided to move there. By 1912, this, that's the new Chinatown. That's the beginning of the new Chinatown. And the new Chinatown was in this in this map, this is 34, Armor Square 34. So all of these uh, community areas actually were divided by the sociology department, okay, sociologists in University of Chicago in 1920s. <coughs> so they divided them, so compared to this four new area, this is 77 community areas, more precise. You know, it's easier to, to keep track of the population increase, you know, census data, collect the census data, 
you know, uh, determine government uh, funding. So 30, initially Chinatown fell into the uh, 34, right, the area 34. But in the recent years, since 1980s and 1990s, more and more Asian also moved to the 60, okay, which is the Bridgeport. Okay. So Bridgeport also had more Chinese. But however, Armour Square had the highest concentration of Chinese. So these two places together, you have probably 20,000 Chinese living in here, residential area. So in this way, the Chicago is very unique. It's different from St. Louis, because the Chinatown is a more urban center. Urban Chinatown had a larger proportion, larger percentage of public. While St. Louis, 70 to 80 percent of Chinese were professionals <coughs> or self-employed business, uh, business owners. So therefore, they don't need to have an <coughs> urban Chinatown there, or so-called inner city Chinatown. Uh, because of this new development, uh, some scholars urged um, to include the uh, Area 60, right? Uh, Armour Square and the Bridgeport as Chinatown. So in my book, I use the Chinese communities, plural, okay? because we have multiple Chinese communities in Chicago. Uh, so this is a, a South Chinatown. And uh, in the middle, okay, three, area three, up top here. Uh, this area is uh, the current North Chinatown. So here, if uh, you're familiar with uh, immigrant history, you know the Jewish state there, right? Ask Nazi, Jews, Eastern Jews, or Eastern European countries. Uh, they stayed there, but once they made their forty, they moved out. So the group after group of immigrants all settled there, but moved out. But right now, that area uh, is uh, revitalized by Southeast uh, Asian immigrants since the uh, end of the war, or uh, end of Vietnam War in 1970s. Um, so those are the urban, urban Chinatowns. But in the more recent time, in the present time, if we just uh, discuss urban Chinatowns, not enough we're going to exclude a lot of people. A lot of professionals or students okay, who came to Chicago because Chicago is a city with famous schools, a large number of higher educational institutions. So they had their academic training, then they stayed, stayed here, become professionals. So many of them are hired, hired by area uh, universities, colleges, uh, research labs, right, like the Fermi labs or in industries, Motorola, and they resided in, not in Chinatown, not in, in the city, but in the suburb area. Initially, Evanston, okay, that's associated with uh, Northwestern University, right? Then gra gradually, Skokie, and even you know, uh, Westmont, and even as far as Naperville. And those areas today are also considered large Chicago metropolitan area, or so-called Chicago man. So if you include them, you know, the Chinese community is much larger. So you not only have inner city, <coughs> urban center, but you also have suburban communities. And these suburban communities, I use this concept that I developed in Chinese in St. Louis, I call the cultural community. Because in St. Louis, since 19, 1966. There's no more physical Chinatown. People tried, you know, St. Louisans tried, but twice their efforts were frustrated by urban development. They built a second Chinatown in this also loop area, Belma, the area where uh, Washington State, uh, Washington <coughs> University, Washington University was located. But then, Washington University's medical school was going to have a new parking lot. So they cleaned up all this neighborhood area of security city. So the new Chinatown was again forced to move. So that is why after that, the Chinese uh, uh, residents in there uh, were not very enthusiastic to build a new Chinatown. But we still gather together and 
during the weekend in Chinese language school, Chinese church, during the holiday, there's a so-called China days. Every year in the uh, Botanic Garden, in the Missouri Botanic Garden. So there you see hundreds of thousands of Chinese. So people are always surprised. How come suddenly you have this many Chinese? Now we don't see them. Where are they? So they just scattered them all. You know, they are, they are hired, they're working in the uh, American companies, hired by white employers. They resided in the suburban communities. So there, how do I define their community? So I have thought many years, you know, I had brainstorm with my colleagues, with local residents, and finally I decided to use the term cultural communities. Because you cannot use the uh, geographical marker, geographical boundary to define the community. Not there. But you could use this uh, uh, social and the cultural boundary to define them. Okay, the Chinese language school, Chinese church, Chinese organization, all these Chinese affairs. Like today, what we're doing is kind of a Chinese cultural institution. It's a, it's a kind of cultural community. We gather together, right? Here we find we find the Chinese niece. So the cultural community is also the community structure among those suburban Chinese communities in in those areas, okay. uh, Evanston, Skokie since the 1980s, and uh, Westmont and the Naperville since 1990s. So this is the situation uh, <coughs> in, of the Chinatown. Okay. Uh, what did they do? Chinese find niche, niche economy, just like everywhere. Right? They did laundry, they did a restaurant, uh, um, a grocery store. However, uh, the Chinese business here, you can find the similarities with that on the west coast or east coast. But at the same time, you can also find there's a lot of uniqueness. Okay? And this uniqueness is also associated with the Chicago's this, uh, special location as a transportation, uh, transportation hub, as a center of distribution processing and distribution. So the Chinese, his Chinese business also was characterized as a, a wholesale distributing center. They not only provide the consumption for the local residents, the local restaurants, but also they provide for the area and regional Chinese grocery stores in the nearby states, right? Indiana, uh, Michigan, um, Iowa, uh, Missouri. When I did the research in Missouri, oftentimes I come across the information about Chicago. <coughs> so a lot of the Chinese grocery owners ordered their goods from Chicago. Okay. So Chicago really was a regional center. The, the famous store, here, along here, uh, the, the immigration records indicated you know, how they were operating, you know, what was their uh, business model. So from there, I collected all this information together. Usually, the smaller business probably would have their capitalization around thirty thousand dollars, but the larger one could have seventy to eighty thousand so dollars, which was pretty sizable in those days. So the business they're doing was much larger than they appear. Some local residents commented that you know the store. If you go to Chinatown, you know that. Their uh, front is very narrow, right? That's the look very prominent. Very narrow store, but very deep. But when you walk into they have those always uh, uh, merchandise stacked up. So every day they process, you know, they distribute tons and tons of merchandise. Much more beyond the <coughs> comprehension and the people's knowledge. So they are doing big, great business. So this kind of business enabled the Chinese uh, uh, businessmen here, you know, go further, one step further. Uh, for example, okay, this is a typical grocery store. I borrowed this picture from uh, one store in, uh, in Newcastle, in West Coast, in California. But uh, the stores in Chicago look similar. Uh, the Chinese restaurant tour here in Chicago, they're not just 